I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. So today's video is actually important because I've seen a lot of people make mistakes with this. And this is mistakes made when choosing your vitamin C serum. As you know, I have investigated hundreds of brands and um, yeah, so I think this one is is necessary um, and as you know none of, my, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored right so what is vitamin C vitamin C is a very powerful antioxidant which is important for anti-aging and for anti-pigmentation we have abundance of vitamin C as children so my CN and Joshi like the you know one's four and one's eight and their skin is loaded with vitamin c this is why their skin bounces back very quickly from any form of irritation rash or trauma with us we have a depletion of vitamin c as we age and this is why it becomes important for us really from our early 20s onwards to start topically applying vitamin c the problem is vitamin c is highly unstable in oxygen we live in oxygen <laughs> and so often we buy products that have oxygen around the vitamin c um and if it's it's you know hard to tell if the vitamin c is actually still effective by the time you put it on your face so it's a waste of time and a waste of money so let's go through the major mistakes and especially with other um ingredients if that sounds good to you give me a thumbs up let's dive right in Now, the first mistake I see being made is when you're using vitamin C with vitamin A and exfoliation. So one of the difficulties with vitamin C is when you use them with other actives, so such as retinol or exfoliating acids, both can irritate the skin. And if you use ascorbic acid, so pure vitamin C, it can be too harsh for skin of colour. So considering these are all ingredients that are good for your skin, how are you supposed to put them together? So ideally you want to use complementary derivatives of vitamin A with complementary derivatives of vitamin C. So for example, in my Power Antioxidant Serum, I put in retinol palmitate with tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. Those are two derivatives that work beautifully together for skin of color. I would then exfoliate in a completely different step. So with these uh, derivatives, they're non-irritating. If, for example, I decided to use retinol or ascorbic acid, I wouldn't exfoliate on the same day. So it's okay to use all of these ingredients, but just don't use them at the same time. So how do you choose which vitamin C to use? So what you want to really avoid is irritation of the skin, flaking or drying of the skin, because what's basically happening is damage to the moisture barrier of the skin. And so you're getting more transepidermal water loss, i.e. more evaporation of water from the top layer of skin, which then just leads to dull, dry, sensitive skin, which we do not want for skin of color. This is why I do say, you know, I don't mind you using ascorbic acid, but ideally have it encapsulated. So that means you get better penetration of the waxy layer of skin with minimal irritation, or just make sure you've got nothing else on your skin that could potentially lead to drying and sensitivity as well. Um, my preference would always be uh, derivatives of vitamin C, such as sodium ascorbyl phosphate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, 3 o ethyl ascorbate, or tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, um, because you're getting the vast majority of the benefit but without irritating the skin. Anecdotally, blackheads can appear darker with ascorbic acid too. The reason being that ascorbic acid oxidizes very quickly in oxygen and then darkens and that's exactly what's happening in with a blackhead. It's just an open pore with sebum that has oxidized and is looking darker. So if blackheads are one of your main concerns as well, I would also maybe sidestep the ascorbic acid. It doesn't happen to everybody but it can happen. I'd also avoid using retinol with pure ascorbic acid. So either retinol when it's encapsulated with ascorbic acid is fine. 
um, but not retinol on its own. The reason being that when you've lowered the pH with your ascorbic acid and you have dry skin, and then you put on retinol, which is increasing cell turnover and further drying the skin, you're going. it can lead to irritation. So I just would never put those two together. Same reason you wouldn't do a physical exfoliation or chemical exfoliation with ascorbic acid that has a low pH, because you essentially remove the top layer of dead skin, which is protecting the skin underneath it, and then you've lowered the pH. It's not a good combination. The other mistake I see being made is packaging. So when you purchase your antioxidant serum or your vitamin C serum, make sure it's in an airless pump that's opaque and no light can get through it either. The thing is, there's no test to tell you whether or not your product is working, right? There's no test to tell you that the antioxidants are still effective. So you have to make a bit of a judgment call when it comes to packaging. The other mistake I see being made is people not using their antioxidants in combination. So you need to do this because again, vitamin C is unstable. It oxidizes in oxygen and you know, this is our atmosphere. So I really do want to have them in combination. I would never purchase a a single antioxidant in a serum. I wouldn't even waste my money on that, if I'm honest. So just to give you an example of combinations that I love, um, in my Power Antioxidant Serum, I've put in tetrahexyl ascorbate, retinol palmitate, uh, coenzyme Q10, and vitamin E. So four different antioxidants that work at different parts of the pathway, and none of them cause irritation and are important to use as we age. So this is the one I make for my own face and I am hopefully going to be able to make that for you by December. So good combinations for you to use are either 0.5% retinol with a derivative of vitamin C, uh, or you can use ascorbic acid, then use retinol palmitate and exfoliate in a different step. Um, that's how I would pair those. I have done a whole other video for you on my favorite vitamin C's for skin of color, so please do head over and take a look. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because I'm not always gonna be here, and it's important that the information is out there for you to educate yourselves and empower yourselves and your children when you go shopping. So I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing and analyzing ingredients for you and brands for you, but you know, a few years from now, I'm hoping that we build enough of a library that actually you don't even need me to do that anymore because you'll have all the information. So that's why I want to make this video for you. Don't forget to download your free guide for skincare for skin of color. The link is down below. And follow me on Instagram, Dr. Vinita Rattan, or Skincare by Dr. V, and also on TikTok, which is also Dr. Vinita Rattan. I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. And please do write down below which future videos you want me to make for you. Thank you.